Hi, welcome to iFlip for Math, MathCast Lesson 4-7, Understanding Factors. I'm Mrs. Gooding, and our quote today is by Franklin Delano Roosevelt, who was a president of the United States, and he said, it is common sense to take a method and try it. If it fails, admit it frankly and try another, but above all, try something. So if you're having trouble with division the way we're doing it now, maybe you don't know your multiplication facts very well. Make sure you let us know because we have other strategies for you to try. One of them is called double division, but we just call it the crazy way to divide. And it's really cool too. We'll be teaching you that when we get to dividing by two digit numbers. Our learning goal for today is to use the divisibility rules to make division easier. Here are individual lesson learning goals. Um, first of all, you need to know your facts, so you need to be practicing those every day. You will also need to memorize the divisibility rules. It won't be that tough and it will make division a lot easier. You'll be identifying factor pairs for a given product and creating a t-chart to organize the factors of each number. Then you'll write the factors in a list from least to greatest. By the way, that's the President and the First Lady's Christmas card. Here's our vocabulary for today. First of all, let's just review what a product is. That's the answer to a multiplication problem. A factor pair are two factors, just like a pair of shoes is two shoes. That's two factors that are multiplied together to get a product. For example, four times five is 20. Four and five are both factors of 20 and together they're a factor pair. Divisible is a new word. When the dividend can be divided into equal amounts by the divisor with no remainders left over. So anytime a number is divisible by another number with no remainders, like 20 divided by five is four, so 20 is divisible by both five and four. The divisibility rules are, they kind of go down a list, and we're going to take a look at those in just a minute. Mathematicians have discovered patterns that help us to determine if one number is divisible by another number. Remember, that's one of the fun things about math, looking for those patterns. Sometimes they're patterns other people have discovered, and sometimes they might be patterns that have yet to be discovered. You might be the one to discover them. That's the fun part of math. So here is a copy of our divisibility rules. You can also find these on the website, www.iflipformath.org, under the resources tab. And remember that four is a number, not the word for. Here are the divisibility rules that I want you to memorize. If a number is divisible by two, then it is going to have a zero, two, four, six, or eight in the ones place. That means it's going to be an even number. All even numbers are divisible by two. If a number is divisible by three, then it will have a digital root of three, six, or nine. Remember, that's when we add all of the digits in a number up until we have a single digit. So if it has a digital root of three, six, or nine, it's divisible by three. If it's divisible by four, then if you take the number in the ones place and the tens place and look at them as a number within a number, then that number will be divisible by four. If it is divisible by five, it's going to end in five or zero. If it's divisible by six, it's going to be an even number and it's going to have a digital root of three, six, or nine. If it's divisible by seven, you're just gonna have to divide to find out. There's no lazy way of doing this. To be divisible by eight, the number in the ones, the tens, and the hundreds place all together, a number within a number again, make a number divisible by eight. If it's divisible by nine, it has a digital root of nine. So all those numbers that we've been finding the digital root of nine in and multiplication, they would all be divisible by nine. If it's divisible by 10, it has to end in a zero. So we're gonna use those rules. You can print them out and keep them next to you. You can look at the sheet that's glued into your flip journal. Just make sure you have it out where you can see it because you're gonna be using those to put your numbers in a T-chart. 
So here's the example that we're going to do today. You can also see a picture of Franklin D. Roosevelt up there when he first graduated. Hopefully you'll send me a picture of you someday in your cap and gown when you graduate. And there he is over on the left talking to our favorite president, Harry Truman, because he's from Missouri. So we're going to use a T-chart to find the factors of 48. We're also gonna use those divisibility rules. Make sure you write everything down that I write down so that you have an example to follow on the practice problems. So I've written the number 48 on top of a T-chart. Can you guess why that's called a T-chart? Looks like a giant T, doesn't it? So we're going to start with 1 because we always start with 1 because 1 divides evenly into every number. And we use our identity property of multiplication to know that 1 times 48 equals 48. Now we're going to write 2 down because we're going in order. Now we use our divisibility rules and I've got my copy right over here. It says that to be divisible by 2, a number has to end in an even number. So we look at our 8 up here. That ends in 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8. 8. So we know that 48 is divisible by 2. We just have to figure out what it is. So if we divide, 2 goes into 48, 2 goes into 4, 2 times, 2 times 2 is 4, 4 minus 4 is 0, bring down, 2 goes into 8, 4 times, and 2 times 4 is 8. There we have nothing else to bring down. We have 24 is, we have a roof over every room in our house, so I'm going to write 24 right here because 2 times 24 is 48. Now let's write a 3 down here. Let's see. It says for 3 that it has to have a digital root of 3, 6, or 9. So let's add 48 up. 4 plus 8 equals 12 and 1 plus 2 equals 3. So that's our digital root for 48. Well, if it has to have a digital root of 3, 6, or 9, it's definitely divisible by 3. So 3 goes into 48. I'm going to do my little division problem. Lots of dividing in this. 3 goes into 4 one time. 3 times 1 is 3. 4 minus 3 is 1. Bring down my 8. And 3 goes into 18 six times. 3 times 6 is 18. 3 times 16 right here is 48. So now we're moving on to the number 4. 4 says that if 48 is divisible by 4, and I happen to know that 4 times 12 is 48, so 4 times 12 is another factor pair of 48. We're going to have to make this longer. Now, 5, 5, it has to end in 0 or 5. 48 doesn't end in 0 or 5, so it is not a factor of 5. I'm going to get rid of that. Now, 6, 6 times 8 is 48. So, I'm ready for 7. 7. I would have to divide this. I know that 7 times 7 is 49 and 7 times 6 is 42, so 7 is not a factor of 48. Let's get rid of the 7. Now, the next number is 8, but I already have 8 as a factor right here. So when I get to 8, I know that I'm done. That's my next factor. There's nothing else that's going to be listed on here. When I write these in a list, I start up here at the 1, and I write them in a lucky horseshoe shape. Remember, a lucky horseshoe shape is written so that the luck doesn't run out. It's hung like this instead of upside down. So I'm going to start at my 1. The next number underneath that is 2, then 3, then 4, then 6, and then as I come around the curve of that lucky horseshoe, the next one is 8. I'm going to go up to 12, 16, 24, and finish 
with 48. I just wrote my list right around my horseshoe. Began with one and ended with 48. And that is a list of the factors of 48 from one to 48. Now, if this were the first time I had ever done this, I would definitely have to go back and, ref and refer to my divisibility rules and to the practice problem I just did, that example problem. So make sure that you wrote that down. If you didn't, stop right now. Go back and write it down so that you can see exactly what you need to do on these practice problems. Here's our first one. List the factors of 24. This is number one. List the factors of 24. Use your divisibility rules, write them in a t-chart, and then list them out. Go ahead and pause and push play when you're ready. Did you write 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, and 24? Good for you if you did. Let's watch and see how we did that. So I've written my 24 on top of my t-chart and I start with my divisibility rules. I know that it's divisible by 1 because every number is divisible by 1. I don't want to ever forget that on my chart. 1 times 24 is 24. That's the identity property of multiplication. I always start with 1 and then I try and see if it's divisible by 2. It ends in 4, which is an even number, so it is divisible by 2. And I happen to know that 2 times 12 is 24. So I can write that in there. Let's see if it's divisible by 3. 2 plus 4 equals 6. Well, the rule is that it's divisible by 3 if the digital root of a number is 3, 6, or 9. And it's 6. So I have to think what times 3 is 24, and that's 8. 8 times 3 is 24. Now let's see if it's divisible by 4. Will 4 go into 24? Yeah, it will. 4 times 6 is 24. Do you see why it's so important to know your multiplication facts? You could skip count these, but it's going to take you a lot longer. Let's see if 5 will go evenly into 24. Well, the rule says that to be divisible by 5, it has to end in 0 or 5. So let's get rid of that 5. Now, my next number to write here is 6, but I've already written 6 here, so I don't need to keep going. I'm going to list out my factors starting at the 1 and ending with the 24. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, and 24. 24 is always a factor of itself. It's time to challenge yourself. We didn't have a regular word problem today because there really aren't word problems using this process. But I wanted you to take a look at this photo and the photo in the, the uh, actual screen before this. President Roosevelt actually had a disability. He had trouble walking because he was a victim of polio. And so that is his wheelchair right there. You don't see very many pictures of him in his wheelchair because he wanted people to see him as being a very strong person. I just wanted you to see that because he was a person who had a huge impact on our country, a very important person, but he had a disability. He had a hard time doing some things. and. Even though you may have a hard time doing some math problems, you can get past it and become a really successful math student, just like President Roosevelt overcame his disability. Here is our challenge problem. What are the common factors of 48 and 36? Remember, a common factor is a factor that they both share. So you're gonna go through the process that we went through tonight using a t-chart and divisibility rules and a list for both 48 and 36 and then see which factors they have in common. Write your answer in your flip journal and be ready to come back and check with your peers. Finishing up, go ahead and review your learning goals. This was a pretty fun lesson. As long as you have your divisibility rules handy, it should have been pretty easy for you. Um, multiplication may make that hard. That may lower your learning level to a one or a two because you struggle with multiplication. So keep practicing that multiplication. 
In your flip journal, write down if you have any questions at all that you need me to answer tomorrow. And you have completed lesson 4-7, Understanding Factors. That's a picture of President Roosevelt waving goodbye to us. Can't wait to see you tomorrow.